All right, now that we're all on Google Chrome Canary together and we got all the latest and greatest stuff, uh, let's dive in. So I'm going to go ahead and command option I to open up the dev tools and we'll start checking out the elements panel. So like I mentioned in the first video, basically what we have going on here is these two tabs distinct from each other and they're HTML and CSS. Um, as I mentioned before, this is this nice interactive version of the DOM where we can edit all sorts of things. We can add or change classes. Uh, you can right click over here and edit as HTML, which is really nice sometimes if you have a substantial change to make and then you just click out of it to save. Um, another cool trick that I use all the time is you can use the H key to hide and show things. So I can take this whole container and just hit H and it'll remove it. Um, I do that a lot when I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm working with. I just kind of tap it and it'll flash for me. Another great thing um, that you can do, a trick that I use a lot, is let's say you've got this uh, element over here and it's like this H5. And in, for the most part, we use the um, highlighting feature, right? So we'll like kind of scroll around and we'll be like, oh, okay, it's, this is the element that I'm looking at over here. Um, but sometimes, let's say you're scrolled up and you've got a really long page, like I would do this a lot when I worked on Twitter.com, um, and you're like hovering over it, and you get this little, you'll see right over here, uh, you get like an indicator that the element you're hovering on is below. But sometimes it can be a real pain to scroll all the way down and keep checking, you know, is it above or below, is it above or below. So a really neat trick you can do is you can right click on any element and you can click scroll into view, and it'll actually move your viewport right where you need to be. I use that one all the time as well. Um, some other cool tricks, we went over using the computed styles a bit, um, but let's cover that again. So if we're looking at something like this header, uh, and maybe specifically, we'll dive in a little bit here, this H1 that says learn Node.js, um, you can see over here all of the styles that apply to it, which is really helpful. Uh, and a quick thing to point out, when you see these crossed out ones here, that means that they are not currently applying. And for those that are not familiar, this is all has to do with CSS specificity. So CSS has this kind of system of um, you know specifics that allow you to basically it allows the browser to deal with collisions. So we've got like H1s have a selector that says the font size needs to be 36, but then H1s inside this header class have a different uh, font size that needs to be 60. And so if the browser just had both of these, they both are styling this particular H1, applies to both of these conditions. So how is it supposed to know which one to use? And that's what CSS specificity is. So it would be like, um, you know, the element gets trumped by a class selector and a class selector would get trumped by an ID. So you could, you know, if this was H1, or let's go change, so class of header, and then here's a little trick I use. Instead of editing as HTML, I kind of go over to the side here, and then you can add ID equals you know, foobar or something like that, and it'll know what to do with that. So we've got this class selector. H1 gets a different font size. So now let's add a, an ID selector to trump even that. So we can go over here and click New Style Rule. And then we can put in our own selector here. So ID of foobar H1. And with here, I'll click in and I'll do font size 100 pixels. Uh, and so now we can kind of see that um, this font size 100 pixels trumps this font size 60 pixels, which trumps this 36 pixels. Uh, that's not really dev tool specific. It's just good to know that when you see things crossed out in here, it means that they loaded uh, with something that had more specificity. So that's a kind of cool thing you can do. Another thing that I love is this computed styles tab is probably where I spend most of my time. And the point here is that, we, especially with bigger, more robust applications, it can get really, really tricky to say, find where a certain thing is coming from. Like if you want to see like, why is this 100 pixels on a small app like Nodecast, you can just look right over here and see. But if you're on a big app like working on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, you're going to have probably, you know, thousands of selectors kind of all competing and things like that. And it gets really tricky to just see like, you know, what's making it so big. So you can go on any element and you can come over to the computed styles. And this will show you after all the negotiation, after all the uh, specificity rules are applied, specifically what are you seeing? Like what things have made it, you know, to this element rendering in the DOM. Um, and so we could see like, you know, what gives it its, you know, its margin or what gives it its font size. Like that was the example I just had. So you can see its font size is 100. And I think this little arrow here will take you, yeah, back to the styles tab. This is something that you won't see if you're not in Canary. So again, you should go out and download Canary. But it's a really cool little helper. So you can see what the font size is. 
Um, you can see all the different ones that are fighting over it here, and then you can click on this little arrow and it'll pop you back into styles and show you exactly what you're looking at. So I find that being really helpful. The other thing I use computed styles for is if I want to see what spacing something has. So this is like the visualization of the box model, right? So you've got your element has a width and a height, then there's padding, then there's border, then there's margin. And that's just kind of, you know, if you were to take an element and, uh, you know, give it, you know, 20 padding, uh, 20 pixel border and 20 margin or something like that, you know, it renders in this order, padding closest to the element, margin farthest away. Um, and so this is really great if you want to see, you know, what's what's kind of pushing what, you know, how big the element itself is. And is it, you know, if you're noticing a spacing issue in a site you're working on, is it coming from margin? Is it coming from border? Then you can isolate it to margin and you can come down in here and say, okay, well, what's giving it margin? I'm like, oh, okay, it's got too much margin top. Where is that coming from? Click the arrow, see it's coming from right here. So this is kind of my usual workflow when I'm trying to figure out, you know, what CSS is applying to an element. Um, you know, what am I looking for, what the problem area is, and then pop back over here and you can see the actual selector. Uh, another cool thing uh, that won't work on production sites that are all bundled together like mine, but they will work really nicely on your development site, is if you want to, you know, really get in there and see where the selector is coming from, you can go ahead and click this file name. It's file name colon line number. So you can go ahead and click that and it'll take you into the sources panel. So this is switched to sources and it'll show you specifically where that selector is. So I have one giant file, so I can't actually tell by this which individual file that gets bundled it's coming from. But if you have your development version on, you will be able to. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention with that is once you click on one of these, you can at any time click down here and format or pretty print. So it'll show you, you know, what the selector looks like or whatever. Uh, we're going to get into the sources tab later, but this is also editable. So you could change this to 100 pixels um, and hit save or you know, something like that. I think it's being overridden right now by that um, by that ID selector we put. So we can put that color red and save that and notice the change here. So kind of all getting you to the same point, and we will cover this panel in depth later. Um, cool, so that's good about elements. I think one of the last things that I wanted to talk about, and let's go back to this like um, image slider. I think I found s some page a, a while ago. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is just some random page that has image sliders on it. One of my absolute favorite things um, is I think a lot of times we use the dev tools after we figure out, you know, like what piece of JavaScript or CSS or HTML uh, it is where the problem is, where we need to be. Um, but sometimes, especially when you're new to a project, you're, you know, you have kind of no idea what JavaScript is affecting a certain area or what CSS is affecting a certain element. All you know is what you can see. So for example, I've never been to this site before and I've never worked on it. So I have really no idea, um, you know, what it is that would be making these changes. I assume there's some JavaScript somewhere that is like applying a bunch of effects and, you know, I have no, no clue. So I, one thing I can do is I can go ahead and I can inspect element. And what you want to do here in the elements tab is you want to grab the like the parent, the player. Um, so I, we can gra grab like maybe this uh, slider frame. And what you can do is you can right click and you can actually set breakpoints. So for those that are familiar with step through debugging, uh, maybe in your backend language, and we're going to cover it in JavaScript using the dev tools soon, a breakpoint is basically you telling the computer, uh, if you ever parse this line of code, I want you to stop. And I want you to freeze, you know, everything, the state of everything, and let me kind of poke around in there. And it's a really great way of debugging applications, uh, as opposed to just kind of logging out stuff at all all points. So with this breakpoint for HTML is a little bit different, but the same concept. You can say if you're ever going to change any items in the subtree, or modify any attributes on the item itself, or ever remove the node, I want you to stop for me. So since I can see that from slider frame with this nice purple background that Chrome gives me whenever it's changing things. I can see that it's subtree things that are being modified. So I can right click over here, break on subtree modification, and then I just wait. And there it goes. Next time it tries to modify the subtree, it actually pauses and I get this nice step through debugger. It's taking a minute. I'm assuming there's a ton of JavaScript. Okay, so I haven't clicked anything since then. So I said stop on subtree modification and I just waited. And the next time it tried to repaint this screen, it paused in the debugger and it, it brought me over to the sources screen and it brought me over to this file. I didn't have to click anything for that. So my first click now is going to be to pretty print this JavaScript file. 
that's probably going to take a while too because I think it's a really big file on this site. Uh, and again, this is not super helpful because it's very, very minified code. But if you're on your development build, I'm assuming, you know, something in here, this is probably like, uh, you know, in some way replacing that element with maybe a maybe content nothing. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing because I can't read it. But if you're on your code here, you know, you'd be able to see exactly what it is that's changing that. So I always use this when I'm on a new project with a lot of JavaScript and I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, what's populating that form field? Um, you know, I don't know. So I right click and I say, okay, like when your attributes are modified, give me a break. And then it gives me a break point and then I can step into my unminified JavaScript and see what's writing to that element. That's another really cool thing. Um, are these DOM breakpoints. You can have multiple set up and you can kind of keep them by unchecking them. Now they won't apply, so you can hit play. Um, but if I want it back again, just check it again and it goes ahead and... Oh, maybe it's not. Ah, anyway, all right. Um, cool, another couple of really nice things. Let me close this one, go for something a little bit simpler. Um, I'm gonna refresh this page because I've been making a lot of changes. Uh, is different events. So if you wanted to see like what happens when you hover on this button or something like that, um, there's a lot of great tools around it. So we can go ahead and we can grab the button. And then one of the easiest things you can do is you can go ahead and you can toggle element state. So this, you can see what it's like when it's uh, hovered on, when it's been visited, if you have any CSS there, when it's focused on, you can see that nice blue border, um, and when it's active. And you can even combine states. So it's like active and hovered or something like that. Um, and so this is great. You don't have to, I often see people trying to debug and they're like, you know, kind of like, um, like I'll see something, you know, where it, you've got the, uh, the element selected and then you're trying to like move the mouse to trigger the effect. You don't really need to do that. You can go ahead and just, you know, trigger hover like this. Um, and what you'll see is something will show up uh, like down in here, this button success hover. So you can actually see that there's uh, a different selector being applied when you hover. So I use all those a good amount. I think the last thing I wanted to touch on here, there's so much cool stuff in these tools, um, is some of the neat little tricks. Like, for example, if you, I'm going to go ahead and close this, if you have uh, the color you want, and Chrome DevTools, let me back up for a second, offers a really nice color picker, which is fantastic. So you can kind of drag things around, and you can really look on your website to get the color that you want. Um, I use this all the time. Another thing that I use all the time is these palettes down here. So this, to be clear, you click on any color box, and then you click on this set of two arrows here. And so this offers you two really great things, um, or I guess three. You can make your own custom palette, but what I use a lot is this, it goes ahead and scrapes all the page colors. So if you're working on a site that has a coherent brand, you don't want to be just you know putting in blue to test. I'm sure you have a certain blue that you use. So you can go ahead and click this page colors palette, and all of a sudden, all of your options down here are going to be you know the colors it finds from the website. The other thing that I use all the time, because I'm not a designer, is I use Google's material design color palette. And so this lets you pick from a whole bunch of different colors that are all part of its, you know, Android uh, and web presence um, material design. The last cool thing here is that you can hold down on a color. Uh, again, this, this feature is only available in Chrome Canary, but you can hold down on a color and you can pick, you know, every one of the material approved shades, you know, for each color. So that's pretty neat. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about, still color related, is that if you ever need to change your color format, uh, Google Chrome can do that automatically for you. So clicking this area goes HSLA, hex, RGBA. Um, another little handy trick is you can also do that by holding shift and clicking on it right here. Um, you know, so if you use like a standard, like, you know, I know white is FFF, but I need HSLA for my job. Um, you can go ahead and click on it twice and see what the HSL version is. Uh, cool, I think that about covers everything I wanted to talk about in the DevTools uh, for the Elements panel. There's a lot of great stuff. If there's anything that I missed or that you'd be curious about, let me know in the comments and I can always make more videos. Thanks.